Hours from Dash Jazz. Just graduated college trying to get a job at St. Jude to help battle cancer. Glad I can donate to this worthy cause. Keep up the awesome job. And we are already on setup for Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos. Take it away, Covert Muffin. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. My screen name is Covert Muffin, and we're going to be breaking down Warcraft 3 The Orc campaign. However, uh, in my previous performances, I've done a bit of solo commentary. This time, I thought I might rope in some of my friends to assist me. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pass you these. Uh, don't worry about it. It's totally going to go well. Thank you. I, I have utter you. faith in your, your knowledge. But just to confirm, none of you have ever speedrun this game before, correct? Correct. 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 All right, perfect. Okay. Woo. All right. Uh, so that being said, why don't we go through uh, each introduction as well so you guys know who we're going to be dealing with throughout the run as I call them by name and give them prompts and stuff. So uh, take it away, Grim. Of course. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Grimelios, and today I will be supplying informative commentary to assist in developing a progressed depth of understanding <laughs> pertaining to the mechanics and tricks shown in this performance today. Yep, very important. Yep. In other words, I will be saying the smart things. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my screen name is Bulletin. I will be Positive Couch Guy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Munch Koopas. I'll be Covert Muffin's Inner Thoughts. And I'm really excited to do this run of uh, Warcraft 3. That's what we're doing. <laughs> That's right. Don't worry, we totally prepared ahead of time. I, I promise. Uh, so why don't we do a bit of call and response just in case this didn't quite make sense. Uh, so, Grim, give us an example of informative commentary. Of course. Warcraft 3 is classified under the RTS, or real-time strategy, genre of video games, which holds a balance between resource management and production with the control of individual and groups of units. Indeed it does. Whoa. I'm so excited for this run, Muffin. You're going to do great. Wow, thanks, Bula. I could really hear it in your voice. <laughs> All right, Muncha. I didn't understand half the words Grimelios just said. <laughs> all right, and that with it, are we also on time to start? All right, we got the thumbs up starting in three, two, one. Warcraft 3! <laughs> all right, fantastic. So um, we kind of escaped Lordaeron because there's a whole undead scourge that kind of just went ahead and murdered everything. Uh, all in the sake of friendship, of course, because... Uh, friendship is ever so important for those undead deuterinos. That being said, though, um, if you are unfamiliar with this, this is indeed an RTS game, as Grimelios explained earlier. So we're going to be controlling multiple units as we go through, as well as balancing macro and some micro mechanics. There you saw a little bit of a gold chest spawn on the ground. This one will show up for a little bit longer, and these are known as items. Uh, so throughout this game, with my hero unit Thrall, I'm going to be collecting items and doing some other important stuff. So that being said, Grim, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit more about these heroes and spells. Of course. Throughout this campaign, we'll be getting to control three different hero units. Now, and for the majority of the run, we will have control of Thrall, who has three spells to burst enemies and help sequence break past unnecessary parts of missions. His chain lightning spell helps take down groups of enemies. Feral Spirit, which we'll see a little later, uh, supplements our army and soaks damage. And lastly, Thrall's ultimate, Earthquake, will be used to demolish structures efficiently. Yes, indeed. And so over here, what we're going to be doing is collecting some extra friendarinos that are going to be important for the end of the mission. Uh, because you can really think of, of these in terms of like an RTS speedrun as our goal is to finish a primary objective. And that is the only thing that matters. So if we can end up skipping unnecessary engagements and fights and what have you, that will just end up speeding up the overall um, uh, game itself. So here, even though I could end up fighting things to get some extra experience for my hero to level up and strengthen my spells, I'm not going to be doing so because actually the experience from the neutral creeps and stuff on this mission are reduced heavily. So we could reach level two by the end of it, but uh, it's the, the amount of time it takes and the number of enemies is not well worth. Um, that, and that time that we end up spending. So as I'm coming down here, the main objective is going to be just uh, taking out a group of centaurs, and uh, that will end up spawning a cutscene which is going to teleport this group of enemies uh, from over here uh, to be able to finish out the mission. 
Um, so that being said, uh, coming down here, as I mentioned, we're going to get some more uh, friendarinos because everybody likes friends. And we are going to come down and start this engagement. After these four units die, what ends up happening is all of my units get teleported right in front of these trees, right? And that will end up um, allowing me to uh, get an item without actually losing any time. So I'm going to bring Thrall down here, and then the cutscene should start to fade, and boom, I just picked up a Hellstone. So if I had missed that pickup of, of, of the Hellstone, I would have had to uh, like awkwardly walk back, and it would have been shameful and embarrassing. So really glad I didn't make that mistake in front of 100,000 people currently watching. Fantastic. Yo, nicely done. Keep it up, man. Wow, thanks, fool. That was, woo. Man, that just gave me a swell of confidence. Thanks, thanks for the positive couch guy, Bool. Um, so up here, uh, we're introduced to Karen, and we don't actually have control of Karen. Um, but you'll notice I have all of these items in my inventory. Some of the items we're going to be using on future missions because they end up crossing over. However, I'm going to use the Scroll of Healing, which acts as an AoE spell um, and heals a bunch of allied units. Because these Taran are classified as ally units, that scroll of healing ended up also healing them. This is actually kind of important for this mission because these Taran actually have higher upgrades than the units that the game gives me in this first mission. We only have plus one upgrades, whereas the Taran have plus three. Also, these Taran you can kind of think of as the final tier of unit for Orc, like in the, in the multiplayer sense as well. So uh, they have this really awesome passive that gives a probability for laying down a huge burst of AoE damage. So if I can keep the, the Taran in the front ahead of my own units, especially these melee grunts, um, they're going to be able to get some nice surrounds and also increase my DPS as I'm going through this engagement. So the primary objective now is to defeat these three uh, waves of enemy. So using Chain Lightning there, which is the hero spell that Grimelios told us a bit about earlier, and then having some nice micro and surrounds is going to allow me to most efficiently be able to take them down. Like these grunts, I'm moving them out of the way. So the Taran and Cairn uh, can actually get onto those enemies and deal more damage. Ah, ooh. Ooh, a champion. All right, so uh, this champion here is kind of like their hero unit, but all he does is just end up getting taken out really quickly. They are no match for the might of the Horde. Heck yeah. All right, two more, and then we will be finishing out this mission. There it is. And so there it is. You're going to notice these main quests completed and also main objectives that are going to pop up through the mission. And then here, just skipping the cutscene and mashing like a, like a madman is going to allow me to pass through. And actually, a 507 is a really nice time for that mission. So that's, that's very exciting. Cool. All right. So mission two. Um, so one of the reasons why there may not be as many uh, submissions for Orc campaign is that there is... Uh, an eight-minute unskippable auto-scroller starting in the, the very second mission. Uh, so going through this mission, uh, what an auto-scroller does is we cannot speed it up, but we have the potential for losing time. Uh, but that being said, Grim, why don't you actually break this down a bit for me and tell me a little bit more about how Warcraft 3 has a trigger-based system. I'd love to. In this eight-minute auto-scrolling mission, we will be attempting to not lose time by continuously moving Thrall and our army further ahead of the following caravan. The route the caravan follows is actually composed of over 200 triggers, which the Kodos won't cross until Thrall has walked over them himself. As such, it's imperative that we consistently work to clear the necessary camps efficiently to buy enough time to collect and purchase items to set ourselves up for the next mission, all while not losing time stalling the caravan. Yeah, exactly, Grim. So up here, what I'm going to do is continue to run Thrall up to the next healing fountain, while I'm going to take care of these centaurs, because otherwise, um, after the caravan reaches a certain point, they hit a trigger uh, to cause them to run out. So bringing up my army to deal with that and bringing Thrall to this fountain of health is going to allow me to get the, these Kodos here to continue to move on and progress in the mission while I end up um, being able uh, to take out creeps and get some extra gold. There you saw I just got 62 gold from that one and 34 from that one. So as long as I'm able to land some last hits on uh, these people, it's going to allow me to progress. And in fact, I actually don't need each of these Kodos to survive and reach the end of the mission. All I actually need to do is have uh, two of them survive throughout the mission. So as long as I do not lose another Kodo in this mission, um, I will be fine. But there are some things that can happen that uh, I will be able to use uh, such, 
corny phrase that says, wow, that's never happened to me before, and I can end up just losing the mission at the very end uh, because of this kind of extra risk that I'm taking to reduce RNG for the Kodos to be, be solid progressing through. But um, up here, um, all we're going to be doing is collecting some extra items and taking out creeps to get gold while I progress the thrall forward and I uh, take out some creeps. So uh, Daredevil, this is an excellent time to read off some donations. Great. I just want to mention we have less than $1,000 to go before what? we reach the 500k mark. So wow. all this, yeah, we are so close. That is insane. <laughs> So I get ready for some more applause very soon. We have $25 from BrightSpark153. Happy to see the positive attitude during the event. <laughs> Thank <you. laughs> I was like, wait, wait, are they talking about me? Or it's like, no, no, I know they're talking about you, fool. <laughs> yes. We have $20 from Ivuki. Muffin always brings the hype and the <laughs> Greetings from Germany and the Ori Speedrun Discord. We love you, Muffin. <laughs> Thank you so much, Yibu. And uh, why don't we do two more, Daredevil? We have $10 from Jerf. New world record and now Warcraft 3 with Muffin. Can today get any better? We have $50 from Rune. Zug Zug for the Horde. Oh yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much. So up here, we uh, cross another trigger, which gets us three of these raiders, which is going to be our next unit. The grunts are just your standard tier one melee um, that are pretty expensive to construct, but they're really tanky and have lots of health. Um, while these troll headhunters have piercing damage and some like nice range um, to be able to lay down the hurts from a distance. Um, that being said, these enemies have something known as aggro priorities. So they really like to focus down certain units, um, especially those troll headhunters, if they can. I had a little bit of a misstep with my micro earlier in the mission, and I lost one of the headhunters. So it's going to make um, further down in the mission a little bit spookier. And I'm actually a little bit behind, so I'm going to have to do some safety strats. Uh, which could end up being a little bit tricky. Uh, but right now, I'm kind of passing a little bit far ahead uh, from, from a shop than I want to be, because I need to head back to the shop uh, to be able to pick up some items in order to be able to supplement myself uh, to set up for some uh, future missions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the found, which will act as a checkpoint, and then I'm going to have to do some split micro uh, with my army. So here we just ended up getting some catapults, which are going to be really effective at taking down some towers, which are going to end up spawning in the next area. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and heal up some units. Whoops, I accidentally moved for all back. I'm actually just going to unbind them really quick. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Can I make um, a quick announcement? Yeah, go for it. We did indeed pass $500,000. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. Great job, guys. The spirits are resting. That, that is incredible. Thank you so much for all your donations. Prevent Cancer, for, can, yeah. Prevent Cancer Foundation is a really excellent charity, and I am very, very happy to be supporting them in this marathon setting. OK, so now I am actually going to lose a little bit of time, but that's OK. Um, I'm just going to pick up some extra safety items and just take it at a nice, even pace. So here, this is, exa oh, this is exactly what Grimm was discussing in, in uh, stating that uh, we were trying not to lose time in this auto-scroller setting. Um, so right now, um, the Kodos are about to come off uh, from their bit of an auto-scroller. But what I can actually just end up doing is running Thrall ahead of them while my army actually ends up dealing with it. So normally, if I actually move concisely and well through uh, this bit of the mission, uh, what we will end up being able to do is pick up an extra item here. Um, however, I do only have two troll headhunters, and Thrall isn't here uh, to supplement it. So we'll see how this fight goes. But here's Thrall, so uh, we might still be OK. This guy here is a pain to take down, because uh, he's going to be dealing a ton of damage, and he also has two lives. So we, we not only have to like take him down once, but we have to take him down a second time after he comes back up. So what I'm actually going to do is sneak Thrall and one headhunter back to deal with a sorcerer. Uh, that is really annoying, because he can uh, buff things, which he was able to get the buff off. Uh, but no problem. And if we're able to take this guy down twice, which we might just barely be able to do, um, we are going to be able to get a mana pendant, which is going to increase our maximum mana. And that is going to be really useful 
uh, throughout the rest of the speed run. But oh, looks like, yeah, they're pausing right there. So this is exactly what we're talking about as Thrall crossing this trigger base system in order to be able to get the caravan uh, to continue on. But that's OK. Uh, we're able to sort of catch up. And we only have one more attack wave to be able to finish out before we're able to get those Kodos safely to the final base. So uh, just a little bit of spaghetti. But uh, overall, that was uh, pretty OK for uh, a marathon performance. Aw, uh, yeah. Uh, that being said, Daredevil, we have time for one more donation as we close out this mission. And this one more donation will be a $1,000 donation what? from Ariel. Oh, Ariel, hey. <laughs> Muffin, you've always been an amazing runner, host, and couch commentator for GDQ, and this year is no exception. Your lovely commentary and literally infectious enthusiasm more than make up for having to set my alarm clock to wake up for this run. Please keep brightening all of our lives with the power of <laughs> and, keep looking, and I look forward to discovering what the reverse door Crouchy of Warcraft 3 is. <laughs> uh, so the reverse door Crouchy is like a meme trick that, that I do in Jedi Knight Academy. Doesn't save any time, but it makes uh, like a segment a lot more difficult. Um, I'm trying to think what it would have been in Warcraft 3, but I, I don't know. But uh, thank you so much, Ariel. All right, so up next is going to be Mission 3. Mission 3 is kind of well known. Uh, for being a bit of a tricky mission. And we're going to be doing actually a pretty big sort of sequence break because we're only going to be focusing on the main objective. So right at the beginning of this, um, I'm going to be do doing something a little bit creative. What I'll do is I'm going to move most of my uh, people behind, building a great hall, which is required uh, for the mission, and then casting Chain Lightning here on the Archmage. And then I'm going to actually be passing off some items uh, to Grom Hex Scream here uh, <laughs> because, yeah. And so uh, those items are going to come into play in the very next mission. So definitely, definitely uh, keep paying attention to that. So the things that I passed over to him were a potion of healing, a stack of healing wards, which he has a weird RNG probability of actually casting because the NPC just likes using items. I don't know why. But hopefully he doesn't use too many here. Um, and we will uh, be able to uh, have a nice stack of those for the next mission. Um, so here what I'm doing is I'm killing very specific creeps because I want to get Thrall to level three. And that being said, Grim, uh, could you just sort of break down exactly what we're going to be doing here with items and spells? My pleasure. As we mentioned earlier in the run, items transfer between missions. And in order to complete the main objective quickly, we need to utilize items that give enough sustain to take down the final encampment with our hero. As we work through here, we'll also be taking out just enough creeps to get a few crucial items as well as progress Thrall up to level three. Let's get on. Yeah, exactly. And so coming over here, this camp is going to be really vital for being able to do some crazy stuff in this mission. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be, oh, I ate the wrong person. Whoops. Whoops. Don't worry, that didn't happen. <laughs> Oh, boy. All right, that's OK. So uh, we're just going to uh, take this engagement again. Uh, what I want to end up doing is uh, keeping this guy around and devouring uh, this guy here in the back, this Impaler. This Impaler actually deals a bunch of damage. And so just devouring with this Kodo beast directly takes him out of the engagement. But I need to make sure that this Kodo does not die. Uh, yeah, and so we got it. All right, and we're going to move these workers up because uh, we're going to take them on a little bit of a research expedition uh, in, in order to be able to uh, further sort of uh, get become one with nature, right? So over here, uh, we're going to take down this last centaur sorcerer, which is going to bring Thrall to level three. And this is going to be great because it's uh, going to allow Thrall uh, to become level three. This upgrades Chain Lightning to level two, which is going to get us some more damage as well. All right, looks like we're good to go. So we're going to summon some more puppies because aggro priorities on puppies are really spooky. Uh, they're like skeletons from the Undead campaign. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run all of my other army units and Sudoku them into the space. Meanwhile, I'm going to run Thrall all the way back here because uh, he's a little bit shy and wants to hide from the humans. Uh, they don't realize that they need to defend against the Burning Legion quite yet with each other. Um, then after the peons catch up, Thrall's going to take a bit of damage from the humans, and then we're going to sneak him by. Also to mention, in this level, I picked up another potion of healing for some sustain. And then I also picked up a greater mana potion. Oh, whoops, that was a uh, mistake. Uh, all right, uh, mash the S key. OK, this should still be OK. I should still have enough mana. All right, quick save. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a nice little uh, burrow uh, because we want to uh, be able to become 
more one with nature. When I actually build a burrow, it actually causes them to put Thrall to sleep. Because the main way I'm going to be dealing damage to this Harpy camp is by using Chain Lightning. Um, so if Chain Lightning is on cooldown, there's no real reason to be tanking damage uh, from these Harpies. So just by simply building these burrows, it allows me to get a little bit of extra sustain as I wait for my, my damaging spell uh, to come off cooldown. So I think they might have one more sleep, or they might just not. And so my goal here is to be able to hold on to this last healing ward, which is going to make one of the future missions good. Also in mission two, if you saw me pick up that Wand of Negation, yeah, that's right. We're going to end up using that here in order to be able to deal some, uh, to, to stop these Harpies from being able to deal some terrible, terrible damage. Um, so also the, the main objective in this mission is to build a Great Hall. We did that right at the start of the mission, and then to get and fly back these Zeppelins back to our home base. But because we sneaked these peons in, not only were we able to get Thrall more sustained to have less healing items, but they can just build a war mill right next to the laboratory, and that counts as our base. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, but that being said, upcoming in this mission, we're going to get access to Grom Hexcream. And Grom Hexcream is kind of a bad-mannered Blade Master, uh, but right here is going to be an awesome trick. We're going to use the Mirror Image spell, which is going to allow us to displace ourselves in two different locations, as you're going to see. So let's see if I get this first try. I did! Wow, that's, that's amazing. That's really lucky. All right. Yeah. But, uh... You most likely didn't really understand what was going on there, so uh, Grim, why don't you break it down for us? What exactly did we just see there? Sure thing. Mirror Image functionally takes Grom's starting position and then displaces to two different spots nearby that are orthogonal to the direction you're facing. Or, ortho the orthogonal. Uh, it means that it's a right angle. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. In one spot, a Corporal Illusion spawns with Grom appearing in the other. That being said, based on the game's internal seeded random number generator, or the, RNG. The what? It's called RNG. Oh, okay, okay. All right, just keep going, just keep going. Of course. The spot where Grom ends up is pre-decided and stored until new RNG seed is drawn. But as you saw, once the desirable displacement occurs, Grom's ending spot ends up being the next unoccupied space within reason. Therefore, mirror image clipping. Uh, yeah, I, did, um, I, uh, I didn't quite catch that. Can you actually just kind of simplify that a little bit for me, Grim? That was a bit much. Let me see if I can explain this. Uh, okay. So right. first you press a button. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, then I that. Then something, something RNG. There's some oh. more RNG, additional RNG on top of that. And then finally, you appear where you want to be. Oh, why, why didn't you just say that the first time? Nice that is what I said. Grim. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Yes. All right. Um, so yeah, as Grim mentioned, uh, RNG is seated in this game. So if I had missed that first try, I would have had to do some other stuff uh, before the clip could uh, possibly do that. And so that was the first instance of that trick. And we're going to see uh, some more of that in the up coming mission. So here what I'm also going to be doing is uh, working these peons back as I take down uh, the Scribble Chieftain, which is part of an optional objective. And you say, Cover, why are you going for an optional objective? Well, the main objective for this mission is to get 15,000 lumber, uh, which if you uh, can't count very well, that's, that's, that's a lot. That's a, met that's, a metric, that's a metric bunch of things. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do this optional quest, uh, which we triggered with Grom after we did the clip. And then we went and uh, took out that fur bulk. And then uh, we are just going to go ahead and get some goblin shredders, which are going to allow us to mine lumber at a re actually a really fast rate. Not only this, but scattered across the map are going to be these three trees of life, if you're familiar with uh, night elf structures. And those are actually going to give us 3,000 lumber each. And so there's four of these on the map. Um, and we're going to be taking down three. Normally, uh, in the standard run before I picked it up, it was kind of like normal to be able to only go for two of these, but we're going to be busting out some really cool strats at the end of the mission um, in order to be able to do some extra ones. So immediately, what I'm going to be doing is taking my army over here, uh, coming down and baiting some of these guys back. This is just to split up the army to get a little bit of an easier engagement, and then I'm going to bring Grom over uh, to help with this. This healing ward, if you remember me passing those over, yeah, so Grom in the last mission just ended up burning two of them, which actually did absolutely nothing for him in the previous mission. However, he was just like, healing wards are fun to place down, and I want to ruin Covert Muffin's run, so I'm going to use them all. Um, but luckily, he allowed 
allowed us to keep one, and so we're able to use it here uh, to heal up our army, um, which is going to be very useful uh, for the remainder of the issue. Then here I'm going to be uh, getting plus attack for my melee, uh, which is going to be uh, useful for um, just taking down these structures a little bit quicker. quicker. Um, and then after my healing ward's gone, we are going to go ahead and finish clearing out this camp and go through. Also, an L a, another objective that is not quite as evident is right now Grom is only level four. And if you're familiar with MABAs, uh, you know level six is kind of level where we get our ultimate. And Grom's ultimate is going to be absolutely crucial to being able to do a really insane sequence break in the next mission. So what we're going to be doing is taking out a bunch of these four spear camps, which give a ton of gold and a ton of experience. And that is going to allow us to do some really, really cool stuff in the next mission. Um, but that being said, as I'm just kind of like wandering around and clearing out camps, this is another really excellent time to read a bunch of donations, Daredevil. Take it away, man. Well, I do indeed have a bunch of donations. Oh, great. Okay. I have a $300 donation from Mr. Wutsky. Hey, AGDQ. Once again, the students at McGrath Elementary School put together their quarters to fight cancer. Here wow. is our donation to help give cancer a game over. Good luck, Covert Muffin, for the Horde. Wow, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, definitely cheer for that. That was, that was awesome. We have $10 from Nans. Hello there, Muffin. Hey, Nans here. Nans. Hello there, Muffin. First of all, good luck on the run. Also, I just want to tell you, you're an amazing person. I'm so glad I'm able to know you. Keep up being awesome. Oh, thank you so much. You got it, Nans. Uh, keep going, Daredevil. We have $250 from Rijess254. For the Horde, go Muffin, take a bath. <laughs> Thank you so much. I took a shower today, but I, I, hope, that's, I hope that's good enough. <laughs> I, I guess that counts. <laughs> All right, uh, one more Daredevil, and then I'll take it back. We have $100 from Old Whovian. RTS speedruns are amazing to watch, and I'm so happy to see Covert Muffin leading the Horde to victory. Here's some money and hope to see more RTS speedruns at future events. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. All right, so here, uh, Grom is actually kind of low on experience. I just know uh, relatively how much experience I need to be able to get uh, through to level six uh, safely. So I'm going to like intentionally take a little bit of a time loss in order to get a little bit of marathon safety. So I'm just going to come down here and defend this camp. Uh, we normally don't need to do this, but this will like greatly close uh, the experience gap. Then I mentioned that uh, we want to take out one more tree that's going to get us a 3,000 lumber surplus. And the way we're going to do this is coming back to this goblin laboratory, instead of getting more goblin shredders, which give us a, um, a bunch of lumber production, we're going to take these goblin sappers. And if you play Dota, this is what Techies was modeled after. So um, this, these units here are going to be able to um, basically suicide themselves in order to be able to uh, deal a huge explosion uh, that deal a ton of damage. So as long as I get um, uh, two or three of these sappers to this tree of life in this heavily guarded base at the top of the map, I am going to be able to take down one more tree. So this is going to be really intense, and so I'm going to focus right here. Okay, so Grom still isn't level six. He needs to kill one more person. All right, here we go. One more save. All right. How can I help? All right. All right, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to bring the sappers up. These towers deal a bunch of damage to these sappers, so I'm going to want to keep them out of the aggro priority by bringing these raiders forward. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wind walk Grom as he's going to go through. I'm going to have him go over and target this archer just in case he got level 6. He actually was able to close that out. And look at this. We're able to get... Okay, one of them accidentally died, but we got two on the tree, so what I'm going to end up doing here is wind walking Grom over to the tree and have him end up attacking it down. All these units are going to come over here. That's okay. Um, I think I can still do this. So I have a little bit of safety that I can do. I'm going to use this healing potion instead of selling it on the next mission for a little bit of extra gold. And we got it. We got the tree. Nice. Whew. <laughs> All right. Whew. <laughs> nice micro muffin. That was impressive. <laughs> wow. Thanks, fool. <laughs> I'm so glad I gave you that role. <laughs> All right. 
that being said, uh, upcoming here, we're still going to have control of Grom, as I mentioned, um, and we're going to be doing some really awesome stuff. So right here in the, the initial setup for the mission, I'm going to start building a bunch of shaman uh, coming out of uh, these temples. Then what I'm going to be doing is taking these towers and attacking very specific structures. Now, we're going to do that, and then we're going to bring these peons down here to get us a little bit of extra supplementary gold, take down that building. And this is all very important, because we're on a timer for when the enemies are going to be able to take it down. But here's another mirror image clip. So what we do is we face a certain direction, get orthogonal, and then we get through, oh my goodness, and that one was first try too. This, this is insane. Like usually uh, these end up taking me a lot more time. Uh, a little bit short on gold, so I'm going to have to cancel one of these. And then we're going to buy two scrolls to Town Portal. The entire purpose for doing this one clip was to get to this shop. Uh, because as I mentioned, we're on a timer. We need to get to this position before this entire base ends up getting taken down. Because if we're too slow, this spawns a ton of enemies up here and makes this next clip very, very, very difficult. So here I'm going to set up. This is the, the hard one. Okay, okay, we didn't get it, we didn't get it. Um, so as um, Grim mentioned, RNG is seated. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm gonna have to like dance around with Grom. Yeah, he's having a good time, having a good time. All right, and then we're gonna set up, try to get sideways, okay, and yo, nice, we got there, okay, all right. All right, Pua, I think it's time for some more of that positive spirit. Why don't you go ahead and read card number three. Nice, dude. First try. <laughs> wait, wait. That doesn't that doesn't sound quite right. Uh, maybe read the next one. Nice, dude. Twelfth try. Yeah, that's a bit closer. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Baker's dozen. All right. So uh, upcoming here, we're going to be uh, coming to this red well of uh, uh, looks like it's a chaos well. So it looks like it's uh, kind of filled with a little bit of haterate. Uh, and this is order in order to get the demonic blood back into our system and get our uh, Grom Hex Scream Rage on. Um, heck yeah. All right. I don't know why we need the fountain. You have a glass of that every morning with your muffin. <laughs> Uh, uh, pretty, pretty much true, yeah. <laughs> I guess speedrunners do have enough salt as it is. Uh, but here what I'm doing is I'm going to pop this potion of restoration. Then because we were able to get level 6, we have this ultimate blade storm. Makes us spell immune and allows us to deal a ton of damage in a huge AoE and be able to take out this Seder camp. Um, then after we're able to get through this, uh, Grom Hexcream is going to be able to get a little bit of a spray, spray tan. The Haterade just really made him want to get a little bit of a skin change as well, and oh, ooh, boy. Uh, that, uh, that spray tan doesn't look like it. It went very well. Uh, okay, oh no, uh, I actually made a big mistake. I, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Um, this is actually, it's actually really bad. Um, uh, I'm gonna still try and go for it anyway. Um, so the entire point of this mission is to actually catch Cenarius here, this demigod, after they kill the last building in this final base. So as long as I'm fast enough. But I forgot to macro my way uh, to being able to produce extra units. And if I time this just right, this entire army is going to start on a move command, and then I'm going to be able to uh, go through here and use these Chaos Warlocks. Oh no, he just took down one. Uh, yeah, and they're no longer off. Uh, this might actually be impossible because I don't have enough. Uh, we'll, tr we'll try and go for it anyway. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm gonna have to restart the mission. Wow, I'm, oh, jeez. Uh, okay, uh, that's okay. Uh, this is why I have the estimate so high, even though my PB is like a 42, it's just because this, this can completely happen. Uh, so we're going to have to just do all this uh, mission over, and I promise not to repeat the bad jokes, so you guys won't have to face bomb more. As much as I would like to hear Vulajin continue on in his positivity streak. <laughs> Yo, thanks, man. Uh, so what we're going to be doing once again is bringing these things over and setting up Grom uh, to be able to do a bit of that clip. And then coming up here, uh, I'm going to go for a fast setup this time. Okay, didn't quite get it. That was not good RNG, so we're going to have to reset the, the, the seed on the RNG for the seed again uh, before I can go for this clip. So I'm going to just come over here, attack these guys a few times, be a little sassy, and oh man, all right, not quite yet. Uh, Devil, why don't we go ahead and see if there are any great donations to help me feel a little bit better. We have $10 from Almost Bearded. Let's collect a metric bunch of money. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We have $10 from Air Angel TV. 
Good luck to Covert Muffin. He's such a great runner in person. He helped me so much with one of my first speed runs and made me feel like I belonged. Go fast, Muffin. Okay. All right, we got this. All right, here's the second clip. This one is the difficult one to set up. All right. <laughs> I love this, right? So it gives you like first try on the clips and then when it's like, oh yeah, you've actually forgot to do something important. Yeah, okay, so restart the mission. And yeah, okay, yeah, we're not, we're still not to give it to you. Oh my goodness. All right, Daredevil, take it away. <laughs> we have $25 from Orals1. Hey, I try to donate every time Muffin runs a game, so this will be no exception. Watch the SGDQ run, so I'm excited to watch this one even more. Warcraft 3 has a special place in my heart. Good luck to all the runners. Donation to Octopath. All right, uh, one more de devil. There we go, okay, I got it. <laughs> um, so one of the difficulty also with these, so you can see how close that was with the timing window with being able to get that. And I now have sufficiently microed, I am confident that I'm going to have enough uh, Shaman this time. But Grim, actually, why don't you uh, go ahead and explain a little bit about why we're producing so many Shaman. Sure. So, uh, <laughs> so drinking the spiked uh, punch bowl of Haterade, as we referred to earlier, um, turns all shamans into Chaos Warlocks, which have the uh, spell Firebolt, which stuns enemies for a short duration. Very useful. Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. And so, like, um, the nice thing is that it, it both changes, like, every single shaman I have, as well as um, all the shaman that I end up uh, producing as well. I was waiting for that guy to mana burn me, but he didn't. So one of these guys has a mana burn spell, so if I'm not fast enough, I like to wait a little bit just to see. Yeah, there, there is the mana burn spell. Uh, but now he's blowing off on health. Activate Blade Storm to be able to take out these guys, which is a really nice sequence break, because otherwise we would have to like snake our way all the way up the mini-map and then have to defeat Cenarius in a later location where he's further protected. But just all because of these awesome discoveries by speedrunners who have who have picked this game up, we are able uh, to get through there really fast and bring a really exciting trick for that. So can we get a cheer just for the community? Yeah. That's, that is so cool, man. All right, cool. So now, yeah, I definitely have enough Shaman this time. I have like over double the Shaman I had last time. So what we're go going to end up doing is set up a perma stun state by layering through all these Firebolts. And there's a really specific rhythm with this, uh, and it's very easy to mess up. Also, while I'm doing this, I'm going to be trying to do two other things. So um, the, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be skipping dialogue, because it's important that I get these little things to show up on the screen that are like, you've done the main objective and stuff, but sometimes don't, those don't actually end up starting until I'm able to skip dialogue. Also, Scenarius ends up summoning all these treants, which are going to be targeting my units. Um, and so it's really important that I reset the attack on Scenarius to be able to continue to get as much DPS as possible. Because I am on a timer, right? And if I'm not fast enough here, he can just end up bursting down my army. And it, then it doesn't matter how heckin' many of these Chaos Warlocks I have. Um, then, on top of that, I actually had to individually take away from the core Chaos Warlocks in order to like, go onto Grom Hexscream to be able to end up using a Health Stone to be able to take him out. And so here, this is coming down to the wire. Come on! No, no! Come on! No, don't do it! No, it's just... And it's not... <laughs> Oh, I love this game, man. Oh, this game is so good. All right, all right, here we go. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, all right, here we go, here we go again. All right, so we're gonna buff Grom because his spray tan does not make him look Guido enough. And then we're gonna start laying those fire bolts down on. Okay, so there is the heal on Grom. Continuing with the Firebolts, there he used a Whirlwind spell to take my Kodo up, but that's okay, because the Kodo's Aura of giving a passive damage increase is continuing on to these Chaos Warlocks. Also, meanwhile, Scenarios is continuing to be perma -sun. These units are attacking my army, but look at that. Under third health, under one-fifth health. How much HP? Yeah, that's right. Less than 600, and... And we got there. We got him. <laughs> yeah. Yes, okay. All right, I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save, just in case. Just in case I, I do something. <laughs> do something terrible. All right, okay. All right, that's not the hardest thing in this run, by the way. 
<laughs> All right, chapter six. Chapter six is going to be a fun one. Uh, so, Grim, why don't you uh, talk a bit, while I focus on micro, what we're going to be doing in this mission. Sure. So in mission six, the main objective uh, involves destroying five production facilities and a heavily defended base located in the top right corner of the map. As such, we're first going to close out an optional quest to bolster our army and set our items up on Thrall and Cairn in order to buy some extra sustain. Yeah, exactly. So here I'm actually bringing these troll headhunters in to be able to kill this harpy camp. This harpy camp is actually required for me uh, to be able to progress with that optional quest that uh, Grim ended up mentioning. And so all I have to do is really just like micro my deuterinos in order to, to, to keep them out of uh, potential harm's range. Then I'm going to bring up these two more units because we're going to be loading them into the Zeppelin, which is going to get us access to those five production facilities of the human base. Then here I'm going to be using Cairn, which has a really nice damaging ability, Shockwave, which is a huge AoE, Stomp, which causes a temporary uh, stun for the units, and then I'm going to be dipping in with Thrall um, to deal some damage. Then uh, these items that actually we're able to transfer over uh, from previous missions I'm going to be doing. Next, I'm going to be buying two mana pots in order to get some mana, because Chain Lightning is a great way to burst down the army. Uh, and then also picking up healing potions, because just like in mission three, where I use healing items in order to get some sustain, I'm going to be using healing items in order to get, that's right, more sustain. Also, funny thing is, with this Zeppelin, all these harpies can actually target flying units, but for some reason, they don't target the Zeppelin. So instead of having to snake all the way through here and clear out all these guys, I'm able to just fly the Zeppelin directly in. Um, so next up, we're going to be dropping Thrall, immediately chain lightning. I really need to try and take down a bunch of these Harpies as quickly as possible. Uh, then we're going to start a next upgrade for a little bit of armor, uh, which is going to come into play near the end of the mission. And then coming over here with Karen, we're going to buy two scrolls of healing, which is that AOA healing item that we saw earlier in the run. And then we are going to go ahead. Then boom, look at that, two healing pots to be able to heal um, Thrall back up and then taking down these last two Harpies in order to be able to finish this mission, this optional objective. So why, why did I do this? Well, this will end up getting me six really powerful units. The IL for this mission, which is a world record held by none other than Blaster Pord, who, if you don't know, is like one of the best speedrunners in the Warcraft 3 smearing community. It's like three minutes or something crazy like that, and it ends up involving him just taking the starting units and immediately going. Like, he doesn't even do this optional quest. However, doing this optional quest gets me these Wyvern which is going to allow me to take down a really strong unit. Also, a really funny uh, bug here. Uh, because Karen was in the Zeppelin, uh, when the cutscene started, it's like, wait, we need him in the cutscene, so it actually uh, spawns a little, like, little image. But yeah, there he is in there. Okay, great. Okay, okay, good cycle. Good cycle here, and then we're going to come over with the Zeppelin. Okay, this is actually pretty tricky, so I'm going to come down. I'm going to micro back my damage units to try and keep the Wyverns alive as much as possible to keep them off the Griffin Riders. Micro? No, okay, that's okay. Um, and then we're just going to be going ahead and dropping everything. Then with the Zeppelin, I ended up being able to build these two catapults here, oh, yeah. and we're going to pick them up and go on through. Next, I'm going to end up dropping this healing ward, which is going to uh, heal up my army, and then quick save, because quick saving, because uh, I know I most likely will make a mistake and have to restart this fight. So Pharaoh Spiros, from once again, have really high aggro priority. So if anything is nearby them, uh, things just get really spooked out by spooky ghost wolves. Uh, which I'm not surprised. Then with the Scroll of Armor, which we saw in the first mission, is going to get my army units a little bit of extra mar armor. Next, um, the enemy actually has a really spooky hero, which is going to be this Brand Frostbeard. He has a stun and he has an AoE attack that deals a bunch of damage, so we're definitely going to want, going to, want to be focusing down him and going through. Uh, next up, we're going to take Karen and the rest of our units and be able to start dealing with these. Oh, this is good, this is good. Uh, with all these peasants here. Uh, hopefully, I'm able to get Karen to level up. I'm actually going to dip back. Okay, there is the level up. So next up, I'm going to use uh, Shockwave over on these peons um, in order to be able to, to get through a little fast. Popping the mana pot here to be able to uh, get a little bit of extra mana so Thrall can end up going through. Next up, Thrall also has an ultimate, which is actually going to be Earthquake. Earthquake deals a bunch of damage to buildings, right? Next, the Zeppelin finally arrives with these catapults, which have siege damage, which also deal extra damage uh, over to these buildings. And we're going to be using that to, to be able to burst down um, this castle here and the other structures. Then this workshop is going to be the last one that we end up needing. Fantastic. All right, so far, so good. I'm actually going to transfer some items now, uh, and then we are going to, to go on and, and progress on through with the remainder of the mission. This is actually getting a little bit spooky because I'm kind of starting to run out of units. Uh, but as long as I just uh, correctly micro my units, 
I will actually be able to, to do the rest of this mission no problem. Uh, so because this is getting a little bit spooky, I'm going to transfer items from Thrall to, to Karen for the ne next mission now. Next, I'm going to load my catapults back into my uh, my step one. Then with all these guys coming in here attacking my units from behind, I'm going to drop the catapults over here because all they'll get attacked by is this tower. And then taking down this final structure, using Shockwave on Karen actually deals damage to buildings, so we're going to drop that, deal a little bit more... Yeah, that's fine, that's fine, that, that Karen ended up dying. I just have to keep these catapults alive. And we got it, nice, dude. Yeah, awesome. Okay. That was the hardest part of the run, and I just did that, cool. <laughs> um, so that being said, upcoming into this next mission, uh, we're going to be having control of Thrall here, which is going to be able to uh, start us off going through the mission. And this is going to be one of those missions where uh, we can just end up running uh, things to the end and pass everything. So there, our Shaman actually have some additional training coming to here. And so they have this uh, spell known as Bloodlust. And this actually increases my movement speed of a unit by 25%. And the only important thing here is that I actually just uh, keep Thrall moving. Um, but also, I'm going to be casting Bloodlust one more time, just right here, as I progress through. Because uh, I have to, like, stop at those skeletons anyway. And there I just picked up a greater mana potion for a little bit of safety on this level. And then we're going to be coming up here and pick a, a potion of grading man greater mana, which is actually going to get me some really excellent sustain coming into the final mission of the speed run. Um, but that being said, I mean, we've, we've had just, like, a, a really tricky run so far. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be breaking down this gate. We're going to summon some spear wolves, but... Um, yeah. I, I think it's it's really time for Vulgen. Uh, I know you, you've been a, a good friend of mine, and you've watched a lot of my stuff, so uh, why don't you really show your appreciation for me right now and read a card? Why, why don't we do card number five? I think that'll be a good one. Orcs for honor. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Muffin. This is why you're my favorite speedrunner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, Vula? You mean that? No. <laughs> oh, you make Muffin sad. Oh. Yeah. Well, actually, the, the thing is that the, the probability, Muffin, Wait, I think, what? as we're being well-received and respected oh, as an God, Grim, runner, not you too. It's astronomically low. I'm just saying, you know, niche uh, no, like no, this. Oh, no, no, Grim, I, Grim, no, just... <laughs> Are you sure? I could keep yeah. going. Yeah, 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 I, I, I think I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, donations, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> We have $25 from Evil Death Crab. <laughs> Greetings from Irvine. I am a designer on World of Warcraft, and I have been waiting eagerly for this run. Wait, really? That's so awesome. Thank you so much for your work. Covert Muffin is one of my favorite runners. Sorry, Volidian. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 I'm just the messenger here. That's what the donation said. Anyway. And Warcraft 3 is near and dear to my heart. Let's show cancer the might of the horde. Loktar. Thank you so much for that donation. Thank you so much. When I find out who that is, <laughs> we're going to have words on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Not Monday. Monday is for snacks. <laughs> Monday is for sleep. Oh. <laughs> All right, that being said, we now have uh, control of Cairn uh, to be able to do the second half of the mission. Uh, we just used Thrall to be able to pick up a quest item and then that, and got him to a certain point that has control. Grim, why don't you actually just break down a little bit of what we're going to be doing with Cairn here? Sure. Um, so up here, Muffin wants to collect two different items. One is vital to the completion of the run, and the other is just more for marathon safety. Yep. The Kobold uh, there will drop a Talisman of Evasion, which is helpful, but we're really uh, going to need the Necklace of Spell Immunity. Yeah, abs yeah, correct. So uh, what I'm going to end up doing, because I want Karen to continue to progress on with the mission objective itself, um, I am actually going to bait this kobold over and not uh, lose the time to, to having uh, Karen have to, to also deal with that, wait for the talisman of evasion to drop. So then here, I'm going to be coming up here for the objective. Oh, I only was able to, to kill two of them off. So I'm going to kill this uh, one deuterino to be able to get a little bit of extra safety. And then what we're going to end up doing is activating the thing. Yeah, and so there's the kobold, right? We're just leashing him over. Uh, and then we're going to be bringing Karen down. So the, grabbing the Necklace of Spell Immunity is actually really tricky. Uh, so uh, I'm going to focus while trying to explain this. This guy here has the Necklace of Spell Immunity. And this is a giant death trap. So if anything is in, inside the radius of this and I trigger the death trap, it ends up destroying him as well as the item he's healing. So I'm just going to quick save really quickly and show this off. 
right? So there's the death trap. Boom. However, notice he didn't drop the necklace of spell immunity. However, if I just take him to the outside perimeter, I am able to, to end up killing him instantly with one hit. Um, and then I'm also able to have him still drop that. So what we're going to do is we're going to be uh, bringing this Taran over uh, to be able to start baiting them over. And then I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Look at RNG. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, let's see if this is a good position. Ah, uh, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so we didn't quite get the setup we want, um, but he's still there, and that is going to be the important thing. Um, if he ended up dying within in the field, then we would not be able to get this item that we absolutely need to be able to complete uh, the next mission. Um, so here, what I'll end up doing is uh, just dropping a healing ward uh, to be able to start healing, and then we're going to bring our units up to be uh, starting the engagement here. So here, we're going to bring them down a little bit. Yeah, here it is. Okay, and so we're going to start fighting this. These guys are also a pain because they can just end up, like, stunning my guys. Um, this can end up dealing a lot of hurt for me. But um, just being able to, to take them out, awesome. Yep, um, I'm actually going to hold on to this last healing ward. But there we go. We got the Necklace of Spell Immunity, which grants invulnerable, invulnerability to magic. Uh, so this is going to stop... Um, Thrall and the next mission from being perma stunned, which we'll showcase off. Um, and then also for the, the item that's kind of useful that Grim mentioned is this 15% evasion, uh, which is going to be a talisman of evasion. And so here we're going to be bringing Cairn and the Tarn up. Oh, it looks like I didn't leash the important dude. Uh, so, oh, what, what, where, where did he, why did he go over there? Like my army units were like right up here. Okay, while he's like doing a bit of an electric slide here. Uh, <laughs> We're going to go ahead and bring him up and then activate a scroll of the beast. And then we're also going to activate a healing ward uh, for just a little bit of safety. Then because I baited him here up to the door, Thrall is going to be able to uh, help us out with dealing damage uh, to this golem. Um, so that being said, uh, Devil, this is a great time to read off. Why don't we say two donations? So the first of those two donations is a $20 donation from Kara Nico. A few years ago, I never would have expected to feel so uplifted from watching someone who laughs like an anime villain. Muffin is the best. <laughs> <laughs> you got me there. I can't, I I can't be like... <laughs> we have $30 from Havoc511. I love in-depth analysis and positivity from the couch. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So here we go. We're going to be going into the final mission. And I actually set my items up really specifically on Thrall. First of all, the ne Necklace of Spell Immunity. I know I've, like, I've said this item name like a bajillion times, but if you remember in Mission 5 when I was failing over and over again with trying to defeat that boss by perma-stunning him, yeah, that can actually end up happening to me on this mission uh, because here we're actually going against the corrupted orcs. Um, that ended up drinking uh, some extra haterade uh, during their morgen morning regiment, like every normal speedrunner, like mu right, Munchos? Like, yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so what ends up happening is these all have chaos damage and full upgrades, which end up dealing a ton of damage. So what do we do to be able to just go towards the main objective entirely? Well, we brute force it, run directly through everything with Thrall, and then we just use healing items to end up uh, being able to get through. So. Definitely a really epic and difficult finish for the final mission, because I just literally run in and out. What yeah. an exciting finish to the run, Muffin. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pua. You're so welcome. So here what I... <laughs> 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 so what I ended up here uh, doing is bringing some extra spirit puppies uh, in order to go through. And then I'm just going to quick save right before this cutscene for a little bit of marathon safety. And then we're going to grab Grom with the soul gem that we got at the beginning of the mission. And uh-oh, uh, this is a little bit spooky, so I'm going to play this. Oh no, oh no, don't get boxed. Okay, uh, still fine. Don't worry about it. We only need, uh, just like in Trauma Center, as long as we're slightly alive, then it still ends up happening. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to Trojan Rabbit. If you missed the uh, Trauma Center earlier this morning, it was an excellent performance. Yeah. Um, so what we'll do one more time is just end up tanking uh, these last few guys and then be able to run through. Then just bringing up the rest of my army uh, to tank is going to be absolutely really nice uh, for being able to get through. However, notice how this Warlock ended up stunning Karen. But Karen also has a passive aura, which ends up increasing movement speed. Uh, just like the uh, the Shaman had the Bloodlust activated to increase movement speed. So having him next to Thrall ends up uh, speeding this up. Uh, but as we're just like starting to close out here, I want to give a major shout out um, to a few runners. Savasuka, who has been uh, 
writing like pages and pages of notes for me each time I pick up a new campaign. Currently has the full, uh, the world record for a full run of all the campaigns in a row. Um, so major shout to Sabu, and then also Blast Report for continuing to push this game further and further. And everybody else has put in a lot of work. So could we get a cheer for them really quick? Also get ready on time. And time. Yeah, GG. GG. Um, and that being said, uh, definitely major thanks to you, Munchakupas, if you could just wave again to the camera. Uh, Vulagen, your positive support is the shining beacon uh, to me every single day I wake up. And Grim, thanks for helping me uh, break down the stuff. Yeah, thank you guys. I hope you <laughs> and continue to get excited for this marathon, continue having as much fun as I do, and continue to donate to an excellent cause. See you guys. Yeah. And thank you very much, Covert Muffin, for your exciting positivity. We have $50 from Kalam, loving the USDA certified 100% organic commentary from the couch. Good luck, Covert Muffin. And now we are going to go to a quick ad break, so don't go away. We will be back soon. Welcome back to Awesome Games on Quick 2019, supporting the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Up next, we have an interview with our Halo Reach runners, interviewed by Kizaron. So I am now going to throw it over to the interview area on the other side of the platform. Take it away, guys. What is up, HEDQ 2019? It's Kizaron yet again. You'll get sick of me, I promise. I'm here with Wolfie, I'm here with Pedragas, and I'm here with Last Minute translator, <laughs> the Mexican runner. <laughs> Thank you for coming in and helping out, by the way. No problem. But, uh, let's just start with the basics as usual. What are your speedrunning origins? Like, what got you into it? When did you start? Um, it was near the end of 2013, beginning of 2014. Uh, I, uh, my friend introduced me to Twitch, which is the Xbox app on 360, and I started using it more, and I figured out uh, people were streaming Halo, and there was this speedrunner named Timekeeper, and he was speedrunning Halo CE. And I was watching him for a bit, and he noted me to Goat Rope, who previously ran CE in GDQ, and I figured out the website, haloruns.com, and they were speedrunning Halo Reach, and I looked into that, and yeah, I started learning Halo Reach. And yeah, like, I, I used to hate Halo, to be honest. Like, when I was a kid, <laughs> everyone was talking about Halo, and I was like, I don't like that game. And then I got my 360, uh, got Halo 3, then got Rage. And I ran out of Xbox Live Gold in 2014. And I was like, oh, I, I really want to keep playing this game. So what can I do? And then I figured out there was a speed runs about Rage. And then I just started in 2015. All right. And so you both mentioned Reach. Obviously, <laughs> they're Reach runners. Um, Reach has a really diverse community, I've noticed. Um, you're from the States, you're from Mexico, and the couch has someone from the UK. So can yeah. you guys kind of talk about like, just how diverse of a group you guys are? Yeah, it was crazy. Um, we also have another runner that is from Australia, and he speedruns the game a bit. And it's just crazy how we figure out like little things. Uh, we dissected the game, especially our uh, uh, couch commentator. He uh, likes to mess around with frame data and like, likes to trick a lot, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing. Uh, for example, uh, are you on me? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm uh, here to help. <laughs> Conocí a backflip, 
Uh, cuando, uh, when he was doing a backflip? No. no, no. Ah, <laughs> he met backflip. Yeah, backflip, okay. it's a friend. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, he uh, met backflip. Uh, me ayudó con muchos trucos. He helped me with many tricks. Y me explicó esto. And he explained him the game. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, I messed up in the pre-show and said that this game hasn't been in for like 30 years. It's, it's been seven. It's been 2012. Um, this is kind of like a redemption story for Halo Reach because that run was kind of yeah. not the greatest. So um, it's really nice to see that you guys are coming in, especially co-op. Um, what are the differences that we should expect between a co-op run of this and what you would normally expect from like a solo run? Um, there are co-op only tricks, like for example, uh, armor lock launches, where one picks up the armor lock and one uh, we stack, like total post stack, and one the one on top uh, has armor lock, and when he uses the armor ability, as soon as the player underneath crouches. Uh, it creates a lot of pressure on top of the character underneath, and that sort of like uh, moves around really quickly. And if you hit it like towards at an angle, like with the geometry of the map, um, it sort of launches him like up and really fast, <laughs> lightning yeah. speed. And, well, the other main difference is the combat. Like normally yeah. you go killing enemies here and there. In Coop, you split and you kill enemies as fast as possible because you can cover different spawns. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a lot of uh, insta-kills and like techniques that we do, uh, spawn killing for the enemies and stuff like that. So the combat is really intense. Mm -hmm. You were explaining something about armor locking just now. Um, what other tricks and glitches and stuff should we expect? I know there's some out of bounds, but can you kind of go in depth in that? Mm -hmm. um, we figured out a way in the first level uh, for a falcon, like a little helicopter thing, and we disable it and knock it out of power and we knock it down and we get inside of it when we're not supposed to or, in, or be, it's unintended. And we just use that to progress to the level until we hit a certain spirit ship and it pushes us out of bounds. Like it hugs us and it bleeds us through the yeah, there are like invisible three, wall. Three of those ships where you can actually get out of the map with, with those, but the first Two or three are really hard to get it, so the, the last one is the consistent. Mm -hmm. That's the one where we're going to go for. Yeah, and then there's also another one, which is a door clip, a famous, uh, I think, third level, Nightfall. Yeah, whoever you played a Reach clip. knows that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's like day one trick. Um, on Nightfall, they use a forklift, and if you angle it perfectly between a door uh, and you get out on the left side, uh, you clip through the door, and then you just skip a whole bunch of enemies. All right, so um, you guys are obviously, you know, separated by country and whatnot. Um, what's kind of the difference between practicing online with each other as opposed to being at this event space and being able to practice in person? No, uh, no lag, basically. Yeah. It's perfect. <laughs> when you play <laughs> so through perfect. online mode, uh, I don't know why, but Mexican connection tends to pull host. Like, I'm always host, and mm -hmm. the lag is horrible for him. I don't know how I He has like <laughs> less than one second level, like half a second, something horrible to play. So it's really hard. And for me, being here, it's harder because I don't know why it's harder to un understand English here than through the mic. It's, mm. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll throw it to the social media real quick. So we got a Lorelei A8, oh my God, A8T. I totally messed that up. I, <laughs> I give up on pronouncing <laughs> Twitter handles. Um, So Halo has many great glitches and skips. What was the most surprising glitch that the community has discovered so far for this run, in your opinion? Um, I made a bet with a certain runner that he couldn't find a trick. And uh, it was the first level. And I told him that he couldn't find a trick on the first level. And he just messed around for like a couple of hours. And he just found something. And he's like, Wolfie, Wolfie, I figured something out. And he showed me a clip, and I'm like, Wow, this is uh, yeah, insane. That, that's safe, like, like minute and a half. Yeah, oh, minute wow. and a half. Like it's a, a co-op only trick, but he made it into a single player trick. It is really cool. And there's a second I, I would say for me, the most impressive one is an overload you do in the second level. Like you just spawn a bunch of enemies and the the game just doesn't spawn the last one so you can just end the the level fast. Yeah, so basically what he Weird. said, um, it loads up a whole bunch of enemies and the game can't handle that much memory loaded at once. And so it, as soon as we hit the last trigger, um, it 
doesn't have enough memory to spawn in the last few of enemies, so it just spawns in whatever it can, and that shortens the enemy count at the end. And what ends that level is the enemy count, so we just needed to kill like a few, a few enemies, and that it just makes life easier. <laughs> and one more question for you guys before we throw it sense away for some prizes. Um, Speedrunner, otherwise, what would you say your favorite ability in Halo Reach is? Um, sprint. I like, I like to go fast. I would say sprint, <laughs> but I prefer jetpack, because back in matchmaking, I used to like do something called HLG, that you basically oh, yeah. go under the map, like go out of bounds tricks, but in matchmaking. So you just allow jetpack for those, so I'm going to go for jetpack. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> you have My favorite trick, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry, Tiomar. My favorite trick is will be see the game and, and these awesome runners at the event. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard him. So I've been Keezer on. We got Wolfie and Pedragas, like I said. And once again, thanks for being last minute for here, Tiomar. Uh, we're going to send it to Scent, and you guys get to hear some wonderful prizes. Uh, hey, Keys. <laughs> well, Always glad to be here. You know what? I'm just going to walk over to you today. <laughs> okay. We're going to mix it up. I'm coming to you. <laughs> Sounds like a plan, uh, friend. TMR, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, Perodos and uh, Wolfie. How's Great it going? Great interview. <laughs> Good to meet you. Uh, I'm just going to stand by my boy Keys here. Oh. Yeah, we're, we're, getting, we're getting real comfy in here. Oh, uh, TMR, if you wouldn't mind passing down the stuff, I'll, I'll give a chance to show it off. But guys, before I show off some of the amazing prizes uh, you guys can donate for a chance to win today, I want to talk about another way that you guys um, can help out the cause and get more money donated to charity. We've already raised over $500,000 for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. That's, yeah, can we get some applause for that? That's insane, right? <laughs> So I want to remind everybody that Games Done Quick is donating all of the revenue from Twitch subs and bits throughout the month of January. Uh, so what that means is, hey, if you guys sub to Games Done Quick, Games Done Quick is going to donate their, their bit of the revenue right back to charity. If you guys get you know, a 10 sub, donate those to the channel, that revenue going right back to charity. Now here's the thing. If you've got Amazon Prime, you've got Twitch Prime. You know what that means, Keys, right? <laughs> Free shipping on stuff. Close. Oh. But wrong. <sighs> but close. <laughs> um, so guys, if you've got Amazon Prime, you've got Twitch Prime. And if you've got Twitch Prime, that means that every month you can give a sub to any streamer at no cost to you. That streamer still gets the revenue. And that means Games Done Quick can still donate that revenue to charity. So hey, if you've got Twitch Prime, you haven't used that sub this month, maybe consider giving it to us. Don't forget, you know, for a tier two sub, you can put my face in chats. I have no idea why you would ever want to do this but it's an option, and it's one that I am obligated to mention. But keep in mind that uh, that won't get you entered to win any of these amazing prizes, so let's talk about them for a minute here. Uh, you know, first off, it's a little tiny, but hopefully we can zoom in on it real quick. We have this beautiful Wolf Link enamel pen sent to us by our friend uh, Star Salts. Um, it's, it's adorable. It says good doggo on it. And I mean, Wolf Link is the best doggo. Do, would you agree with that, Keys? I miss my dog at home. I'm so sorry, Keys. I keep making you sad this interview. <laughs> I got to stop doing that. Make me happy. Talk about more prizes. Oh, I, I got plenty of prizes. And guys, all the prizes we're talking about right now are from now until the end of Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess a little later tonight. So make sure to get those donations in ASAP. Uh, from our great friend Kari Fry, we have her wonderful book, Banquet of the Wild. Um, Kari's art style is super unique. I love it. And this is a book just full of all of her art depicting the food and characters and locations of Breath of the Wild. Super cool book. $5 minimum donation from now until the end of Twilight Princess. Um, so. Over there, we have a beautiful rainbow rupee painting from our friends over at Studio Pin Pin. Love their style. Um, they do great, fun watercolors. You get all the colors of rupees. You get red, you get gold, you get green, you get blue, you get purple. You don't get silver rupees, though. We're not unlocking any doors here. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Um, also over there, we uh, right now, right here on the table, I, uh, I have no vision today, apparently. We have this beautiful <laughs> BlizzCon loot box sent to us uh, by GDQ's very own muffins. Um, yeah, super cool. Just a fun BlizzCon goodie bag. Comes with a BlizzCon book, um, a Heroes of the Storm Ravenlord crest magnet. You get a, a Diablo vinyl figure, which is super cool. He's a little opposable there. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I love the Vanna White you're doing here. I love it, Keys. <laughs> uh, you get some Hearthstone magnets. You get an Overwatch challenge coin. And you get a World of Warcraft faction keychain, either Alliance or Horde. Um, Keys, I mean, I, I know you play some Warcraft. <laughs> I, I know you played some Warcraft in your yeah, day. Yeah. Which, which, faction, which faction do you believe in? Are you with the Alliance? Uh, yes. 
Good, good answer. Good answer. <laughs> I, I, okay, the crowd was not happy with that. I, uh, I'm <laughs> the so crowd sorry. does not like us. No, I think they're screaming no. for the horde oh, back man. there. Ignore them, though. We're, we're good over here. <laughs> uh, so from our friend uh, She Game, He Games, we have a beautiful Midno wood burning. I love wood burning as a, as a medium in general, and it's just the shading on it is absolutely amazing. The design's great, too. Fits lovely in the circular piece of wood. You can check out a great picture of it over on our tracker at games.quick.com. It's a $15 minimum donation from now until the end of uh, Breath not Breath of the Wild, Twilight Princess. That Zelda game that people like. Um, hey guys, and here we have a beautiful StarCraft II Legacy of the Void Collector's Edition signed by the StarCraft II dev team. Um, and I mean, when I say signed by the dev team, I don't mean like one or two devs, I mean like all the devs. We got signatures. Um, it was sent to us by a good friend, Violet Moon, who actually hit me up on site and was like, hey, sent, I, I don't know if you still got time for this, but I got a StarCraft copy. It's signed by a dev or two. Yeah, this is, this is the dev or two, or 20. It's super cool. It's a $30 minimum donation from now until the end of Twilight Princess. Guys, you're going to want it. It not only comes with all these amazing signatures, you get, you know, a copy of the soundtrack, a copy of the game, a uh, beautiful little art book here, as well as a uh, behind-the-scenes um, diskette with, you know, like information about the making of the game. Definitely super cool. You guys are going to want to check that out. Again, $30 donation from now until the end of Twilight Princess. And I got to get up for this last one because, guys, donating for any of those is going to get you one step closer to being entered into our grand prize, which is this absolutely amazing one-to-one -one replica of a Hylian shield and master sword from Breath of the Wild here, sent to us by our good friends over at Heroic Replicas. These things are amazing. They're incredibly detailed. They're incredibly heavy. So I gotta, I gotta take a second to heft them. But uh, I mean, they, they look great. They feel great. And again, they are one-to-one -one replicas. They are a $250 minimum donation throughout the course of the marathon. But hey, that's cumulative. So you know, if you get 30 in now, that'll get you entered into everything you saw on this table. Other than the Hylian Sword and Master Shield, you get you know maybe 30 in a little later, another 30 here and there. And before you know it, you're entered to win these two one-of-a-kind uh, replicas. So, I mean, guys, that's going to be just about it from us. As always, head over to gamesdonequick.com. You can check out the tracker. It's going to have all the information you're looking for on upcoming prizes, speedruns, donation incentives, and whatever you need. Uh, but for now, let's throw it back up to the front as we get ready for a time